We are giving away a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox Series S on the 12 days of foot trading. 10 other prizes also being given away to you guys that are subscribed to the website. So if you want to support the content, you want to learn how to trade, make millions of coins, and join an awesome community playing in tournaments with people, it's the best place to be. Check out foot trading, subscribe, help yourself never to need to spend EA points again. But for now, let's get into the video. Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to a new video. I'm Fuzzball Forcey. If you're new around here, do consider subscribing down below and it makes a massive difference as so you can click the like button and drop a comment. It really, really does help the videos to be pushed to more people. Thank you to everyone that does it. Obviously, as always, best comment will get pinned to so drop an awesome comment. But I'm getting a lot of questions at the moment about I've got X coins, could I compete in Mbappe? And it's a difficult question to answer in terms of it all depends on what's in your club and how long you're going to grind, okay? The key to Mbappe, though, if you're going to grind him, is really the league SBC. Now, we've done that in other videos. Um, I've gone onto my account now. So, obviously, we were on Sean's account. We've done, like, four or five squads. I finally started on mine. Yesterday, had all the packs stacked up when I was unassigned, and we got an 89 squad done. We've got an 86 squad done as well with two informs. So, we're, we're making headway on my account, finally. But I plan on doing him no matter what happens, and I'll get him done. Bl bluntly... Bluntly, I think you need about a million coins uh, as a backup plan if you want to grind Mbappe. I do believe that up, everything up to the 88 rated squads is pretty easy to grind. I do believe that. The 89s, much more difficult and they're going to come in at about a million coins. So as a backup, you need a million coins in my opinion. You should be able to craft them though. I don't see a reason why anyone can't craft this card. It just will take a lot of grinding. But this video, we're going to talk about how you guys can get yourself a million coins. We're going to sort of step by step go over... The ways in which I would think about focusing on depending on my coin budget and how I would go about making coins. Everything from this video is on the website and don't forget we are giving away a PlayStation 5, an Xbox Series S, 10 other incredible prizes. So if you want to support the content, go and subscribe over there. You'll learn how to trade. Basically the best community, I think, in the FIFA community or EA Sports FC. But that's basically where we're at with Mbappe at the moment. So for you guys that are thinking, right, I need to build my coin turtle up. Let's start talking about what you do from a basic level, okay? Now, at a basic level, you're, you're going to do coin farming. That's really what you're looking to do, okay? So easy, quick flips that are going to make you loads of profit. So simple things that I would do is I'd head to the transfer market. Let's say you're sort of trying to make up to your first 100, 200, 250k. And I'd start by looking at silvers. There's going to be three methods that I'm going to show you here. Start by looking at silvers. And we'll go to Ligon. And what you want to do is just check what the silvers are selling for at each club, Okay. So what you'll then be able to do is build up in your mind which clubs are good to trade with, which clubs aren't so good to trade with. So like Matt Seema, for example, is just there on the market. Again, what's the cheapest on the market for him? 1-3. So that's a decent little pickup to flip back on again for profit. Not massive profit, but early on, it's about little and often. Just loads of little profits, little and often, just picking up bits and bobs, okay? You go through each of them. Some teams are more expensive than others. So Clement Foot, for example, tends to be a lot cheaper. Um, so... The profit margins are less. Where you'll make the most coins is 6pm each day, bidding on silvers. Everyone's on the game. You can get some really, really good deals on, on, on silvers and bid. There's not really too much competition about it. Again, if you know Clement Foot is selling for 900, you don't really want to pay more than six, 700 ideally. Um, but you keep building it up that way. Really simple way to make coins. Use the league gun, use the Premier League, use Syria. The reason the league gun is good is because it is a SBC um, for... You need 11 of the same uh, players from the same team. So with that in mind, the Eredivisie is also really, really good. The big coins for coin farming at the moment are in two other places. The first place that the coins are good is in the Libertadores, okay? I've talked about this before. Now, I know a lot of you guys are waiting for this to hit the site, and I'm not sure what form it's going to take, and this has been the big problem. Because I do think if I put this on the site as it sits, it's going to be quite ineffective, I think what I've got to do is put another 50, 60 cards on there for you guys and find a way to update it in a way that's not manual um, because that will make it impossible to keep on top of. So we're going to find a way. But Libertadores, you can set up Libertadores and Sudamericana squads that are basically between 72 to 74 rated. And all I do, if I want to flip on Sean's account for the Mbappe, is I go and compare price. And I just flick through. And all I'm looking for is one of the cards being on the market at a decent undercut. Now, some of them... You get some really good undercuts on. Other ones, not so good. It just depends on the time of the day. As you can see, bids on these things are unreal. So I'll, show, I'll throw a 350 bid on that Melgarejo there. I'll flick through and see what else there is. 1300 at the moment. 
1300, 1300. So, Solidly selling at 1300, so I know any bids up to like 800 would be good on him. So I ain't got to worry about that. Again, Maya, go do the same thing with him. Compare price on him and see where he's sitting at. And again, all I'm looking for are ways to pick them up cheaper. So like 1,300 there, you could probably buy that without him to worry too much. I don't want to bid on that one to buy it. I'll be able to put him back on for 1,700 again. The more you do it, the more you'll learn the prices, okay? Genuinely, the more you do it, the more the prices you'll, you'll get. Bit by bit by bit, you can see that I trade with them all the time, okay? So that's a really simple way to build your coin turtle up again. If you're, you're trying to make the first 250k give or take, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less. And then the final thing that has been so effective all year is working with gold chem styles. Now, the best cards to work with now are 83s. They are the best ones to go with. So what you're looking to do is find out what a card, an 83 rated card sells for as standard. Now, I think Luke Shaw was about 800 coins yesterday. Might have jumped a little bit, because it's 1,000 coins now. What I'm then interested in is what does Luke Shaw sell for with a shadow because he's a defender, okay? And I go and search him. And the cheapest Luke Shaw of a shadow is like 2,300 coins. There's a gigantic gap there, a massive gap. So you can sit there and try and snipe up Luke Shaw. You can sit there and try and snipe up any real defender or attacker with hunters or shadows. And you can come up with filters. So if you wanted to, you can come up with, I don't know, gold rare, position, defender, league, Premier League, chemistry style shadow. And you can just go and check it and just see if there's any decent filters that work really well. So you might flick up. Just want to see where you get to. So cheapest you can see, 1,200, okay? That's the cheapest. You can sit here, compare price back out, and basically anything that snipes you're going to make profit on. Even if it's one of these guys here, you're still going to make profit. I mean, that Konate isn't going to be mad profit if we do get profit out of him. But Konate, for example, we'll just go and check and see what his shadow price is. Because that might be a massive undercut or it might just be his price it sells for. Nah, it's about what he sells for. Again, sniping, picking them up and whatnot. Bids are always effective. They do really well. The time to pick up most of these, 6pm content. If you know they were selling for 1,200 coins pre-6pm, you see them getting listed up at 1,000 coins, you know you can buy loads of them, sell them on. Some cards will be a few hundred coins profit, some will be a couple of thousand coins profit. It's that simple. Let's talk about mid-budget. I'll be right back. Mid-budget right now is fairly simple and it is working with special cards. Special cards are finally viable in the game because if you search special, right, you're going to get some Libertadores and Sud Americanas, but there are loads of different card types on this game now, so it's become viable to finally trade with these cards. It's really, really good. It's great to trade with, okay? Now, if you're new to it, what I would recommend doing is just getting to know a card type to start with Gold Team of the Weeks, maybe, and again, search, just see what they're selling for. So Shadows, you can see... Cheapest Shadows, 28k, they're both from Mera, basically. You can just sit here, compare price back out. Now, we know Team of the Weeks have a minimum price of 25 at the moment. So it's going to be how busy it's going to be. This price is another matter. Um, but you can get me 6pm again. That's always going to be a good time to trade, 6pm. Again, the website now has this special area on it. It's already on the website there for you guys. So if you're a sub website subscriber, not only you got a chance from those prices, we put uh, special cards there for you now. So everything can do it. What I would do personally, because I know the market quite well, is I go special, shadow, and I do the 10, 20, 30 method. It's been a method that works on every single FIFA slash EA Sports FC. And I just search, and I go through to basically the 59th minute. Sometimes I look over as well, because sometimes there's ones that are a couple of hours in uh, that are good. And all you're doing is trying to find out what the gap is basically this car. So this Locatelli here, for example, isn't terrible, I don't think. I don't think it's great, but it's not terrible. 57k. Now, if I had the website up at the moment, I'd be searching him, but I'm just sort of searching what I'm doing at the moment here and focusing on that. We'll go Mascherano, we'll have the transfer targets. And even if these aren't good deals, you can bid on them later on, okay? Now, I do just want to see what Locatelli is selling for. Um, I know these cards are a little bit jittery at the moment because we do have a set of games starting in the next couple of days. So, I just want to see what he's selling for. So, 57 the Shadows are cheapest on the market at the moment. We'll go 58.5. So that shadow was a good deal, basically, because, again, my guess is he's going to be around 60k, give or take, with a shadow. It might just be slightly below, slightly above, but give or take, about 60k. There you go. Um, so 57 was a good deal. Now, you might think it's not a good deal, because if you bought him at 57, and you sold him at 60, then you're not making any profit. But you'd be wrong, because the market rises overnight. You can usually allow for give or take, give or take 5 to 7% rise overnight. That doesn't mean it's succinct that they're going to get to 65k completely, but the shadows might climb up to that price because they're rarer overnight. Get to 65, you list them up, you make 5k per card, and you move on. And when you're sort of mid-budget, this is sort of 250 to 
sort of 600, 700K, they're really easy plays to make and you can make them continually. And the thing about this now is you know what Locatelli sells for. You know he sells for 60,000 coins for Shadow, so you've got that in your mind now, okay? Again, if you're on the website, don't worry, it's really there for you. So you can now bid on him, you can snipe him, you can do whatever you want, so you've got a rough price of one of them. And you repeat that process across all the cards. So we just put Mascherano in there again. Realistically, it's not going to be the greatest deal that one, if we're being entirely honest, but he probably about 40k, give or take with Shadow, maybe slightly under, but again, we will just check to see where he's at. So again, there's one Shadow there for 40. It really does annoy me that this resets. If you do it from your club screen, it's better. If you do it from your club screen, it doesn't reset every single time. So again, 40,000, that's probably not a bad deal. You probably could get 44 for him, give or take. So again, decent little bit of profit, not, not masses. But here it's all about volume now, right? So you've got your sort of decent chunk of it. Buy 10 cards, 15 cards, 20 cards at a time. Flip them on and rebuy in. And you want to be continually buying all the time. Now, at a basic level, you should try to be out of the previous day's buys by 6pm just because of content as much as possible. So if you have to break even a couple of cards, so be it. Um, but that's what I'd be thinking about when it comes down to that mid-budget. Special cards are the way forward at this point in the game, for my opinion. That's what I think they are. We'll now talk high budget as you start to move on. And it's not icons. You don't need to work with icons. There's way, other, way better things you can do. We'll get into it now. And for this segment, we come to Footwiz. Now, you can trade with icons. It's very similar to specials, right? It doesn't really need an explanation. You're doing the exact same thing, just with higher budgets. And the fluctuations can be great. You can make really good coins at 6 p.m. But I think there are better ways to go about it this year. One of them is what we call Sunday flips. We talked about it a couple of times this year. Um, but basically, the market tends to be at its lowest on Sunday into Monday, basically. Um, everyone's done weekend league, squad battle rewards. There's tons of supply from promo packs. Market dips off, okay? Now, these graphs don't really give you a good enough sort of show of what they actually do because for example here on the Monday it's showing him down at 39 and then I'm up at 42 now it's important to understand that the prices on footwiz are an average for that day cards get cheaper than this 6pm they dip or whatever I remember this week um, for Minotaur I think the buy-in on him at that point was 36 because he was lower than 39 and again the sell put was 43 so it's really good profit you can buy into cards on Sundays and Mondays and buy lots of different cards and basically sell them for a rise later in the week so you've got someone like Militao. We can look at someone like Hernandez as well. He's been quite a good one all year this year. Um, again, dips and bounces, dips and bounces. So Monday down, up again into the into the Tuesday. You can see it relatively consistently. Last week was different because of Black Friday. And reactions might be different because of the sheer amount of supply. But I think we'll probably be back in a place where you can get involved in flips again. But... If you guys remember in the previous video, I talked to you about cards as they come out of packs and how well they're doing. This is Joe Gomez, okay? I talked about buying him when he was 40,000 coins. And again, the low point was the Monday. That seems to happen to every single promo card. Their low tends to be the Monday and then they fly and climb, okay? This is if you've got decent coins now, you can really go in. So let's say, figuratively speaking, you had... 800,000 coins and you went in on Joe Gomez, that would mean you could buy 20 Joe Gomez's at 40k, right? So you've got 20 of them, bought in Chipper Club, sits there and chills. You then go and sell 20 of them and you sell them for 50,000 coins. You've made, give or take, about 150,000 coins. That gets you to your 950k. So you're just short of your million by buying 20 Joe Gomez's because you can do that. You have the coin total to do that to now start investing into big guys. Now, would I say put all your cards into one, all your money into one card? No, spread them out. But it happens every single promo. Deli Ali, again, someone that got low. Sunday this time was his low. By the Monday, boomed. And he's dipped off since then, like a lot of the FC Pro cards did. But they do tend to have this little temporary rise over the course of the week. And then they dip off afterwards. With those in mind, I did bring a video out yesterday. The FC Pro cards themselves are great to trade with. And the reason they're great to trade with is because EA are using the streams as a way to encourage people to gamble on these cards. So when Emery Yilmaz was playing, they were like, maybe buy a Marlin, he might go up in price. And I don't like it. I think it's a really dangerous game to play if you're EA being like, oh, let's convince people to gamble. But you can, I guess, theoretically gamble on these cards rising basically as games are being played. Now, I don't know if I'd go about buying these cards in play because EA have been handing out bans like confetti this year. And every time you buy a card cheap, sell them for a lot of profit. If you do loads in the same time, they should sting you. I would start to think about your investments now. I mean, yesterday's video goes into detail about this, but these are cards I think could be incredible to trade with for the rest of this year. 
And so I've looked at it, I said it yesterday, I'll say it again. Someone like Tim McCann, this isn't really relevant until Anders plays next week. But he is slowly but surely creeping up. It was as low as 23k, he is slowly creeping up because we're getting towards Anders' games. And again, if this card gets a couple of upgrades, it will be an incredible centre-back. And he's very cheap right now for what he could potentially be. An 87 rated Simicam, for example, if he gets a couple of the upgrades that would be potential from Anders, becomes a ridiculous card. They will do really, really well. Really important point with any of these investments that you make, right? Where possible, sell slightly below the max price they're selling for, okay? And if a card hits its max price, don't sell it for its max price. That is triggering EA's bans. So if a card gets to 50k and its max price is 50k, sell for 49, 750, unless it's going to go extinct, then you can hold for price range update, but that's that. They are the exact methods I'd be doing right now to build your coin total up. And if you want to do Mbappe, that's basically where you need to be at. You need to have that sort of million coin mark in your club to guarantee it, unless you're going to put in an unreal grind and really work League SPC the best way possible, you've really got to go about and get some coins into your club um, as a backup because those 89s are going to be difficult to do. That's the end of the video. Like I said before, check out Foot Trading for an awesome, awesome giveaway for the 12 days of Foot Trading. Tournament coming up as well. If you can, drop a like and a comment. It makes a massive difference. And as always, I will pin the best comment like I said I would do. Um, but that's the end of the video. I'm out. Peace out. Speak to you soon.